Today's video is sponsored by The Daily Upside, a totally free, high-quality daily business and finance newsletter. Visit the link in the description to learn more. U.S. criminal authorities are gathering information on contacts between dozens of short-selling hedge funds and prominent bearish research providers right now as they investigate possible trading abuses in the stock market relating to short-selling. According to the press, the FBI seized computers from the home of the well-known short seller Andrew Left, the founder of Citroen Research, back in early 2021. In more recent months, the Justice Department subpoenaed other market participants seeking information on their communications, calendars, and other records. The Department of Justice is not the only government agency investigating possible wrongdoing. The SEC has also send requests for information to many of these firms. Right now, no one's been accused of any illegal activity, and it is quite common for investigations to be opened without leading to any charges. The SEC is a US regulatory agency whose purpose is to maintain a fair securities market and to protect investors from various types of fraud. They can conduct investigations and bring civil actions, but they don't have the authority to send a criminal perpetrator to jail. The SEC would need to work with a criminal authority like the Department of Justice in order for that to happen. The list of names who've received requests for information includes some of the best-known firms that publish negative research and investment funds that seek to profit when individual stock prices fall. Among them are Muddy Waters, Melvin Capital, Hindenburg Research, and Citroen Research. The Justice Department's probe is being run by the fraud section with federal prosecutors in Los Angeles, and there's no indication right now that the authorities have come to any conclusions at all. According to Bloomberg, they've been examining trading in dozens of stocks, as well as the relationship between investment funds and researchers, looking for signs that markets have been manipulated or that other laws have been broken. Subpoenas requesting firms and individuals to provide information apparently went out in the autumn of 2021. But many of the firms on the list have told the press that they've not been contacted by authorities and that they've no reason to believe they're the focus of any investigation. These investigations come at a difficult time for short sellers and short selling research firms. A number of bearish funds closed down over the last few years as the market steadily rose after the credit crunch and government stimulus pushed up stock prices. Many short sellers lost fortunes last year during the meme stock frenzy when retail investors banded together to pump up the stock prices of popular short positions. By late January of last Last year, Citroen Research vowed to give up short selling research and to focus on long only bets. Now, before I go any further, let me tell you quickly about today's video sponsor, The Daily Upside. If you're struggling to find useful and unbiased financial and business news, The Daily Upside might be the solution to your problem. The Daily Upside is a totally free daily email newsletter written by a team of financial professionals with real industry experience. It's become the first thing that I read every morning as it's informative, entertaining, and not dumbed down. They don't just give you a standard take on the news. It's the most important news with real analysis. They had a really good piece a few days ago on energy inflation and the cost of living crisis in the UK. Whether you're a financial professional or just looking for a great source of business news, The Daily Upside will help. It's totally free to sign up and they send you one information filled email every morning. I can't recommend it enough. Sign up using the link in the description below. Anyhow, back to our content. Short selling is a trading strategy that really upsets some retail investors. They hate that firms publish negative research on stocks that they invest in, and they're upset that investors are able to profit from falling stock prices. Some of the most prominent short selling critics historically were executives at companies that were later found to have engaged in fraudulent activities. It's always been seen as a bit of a red flag on Wall Street when a CEO begins blaming short sellers for poor stock performance. 
Lawmakers in Congress held hearings on the topic of short selling last year amid the frenzy over meme stocks like GameStop and AMC and began demanding more regulatory oversight of this trading strategy. I made a video a bit over a year ago explaining the mechanics of short selling, but I don't generally recommend it as an investment strategy to most investors as I feel that it's often easier to find stocks that are likely to rise than to fall, and the risks of the strategy are quite different to the risks of owning a basket of stocks. Short selling, though, involves selling borrowed shares in the hopes of profiting from a fall in their price. I think that the fact that people can do this is generally good for markets, as it draws attention to market bubbles, improves price discovery, and from time to time digs out the occasional fraud. The term naked shorting, which we've heard a lot about over the last year, has very little to do with a short seller's lifestyle or wardrobe decisions, but instead it refers to the illegal practice of selling shares without having properly secured the borrowed shares first. Now, financial history is filled with examples of governments and financial regulators banning short selling. In 2019, BaFin, the German regulator, announced that they were prohibiting new short positions in Wirecard, a company that a year later collapsed due to fraud. Short selling has been around as long as the stock market has, and allegations of wrongdoing by short sellers have been there from the start too. The first notorious short seller was a Dutch man named Isaac Le Marie. The Dutch East India Company was the very first company to issue bonds and shares of stock to the general public, and it was the first stock ever listed on a stock exchange, so the very first stock that existed was also the first stock to be sold short. Isaac Le Marie started out on the inside as a director of the Dutch East India Company. There was a dispute over money and Isaac was not only fired but he was also banned from engaging in the spice trade. He wanted revenge and hatched a plan to take down the Dutch East India Company while profiting from the collapse. The bet itself, the short trade, was fairly easy to do. Back in those days you could bet that, say, the price of grain would drop. Le Marie did the same sort of thing, putting on a bet that shares of the Dutch East India Company would fall in value. Le Marie's next move, though, would be illegal today. He lied and spread false rumors to drive down the price of the stock. After the rumors, the stock price did begin to fall, so the Dutch East India Company did what a company today might do. It launched a counterattack. It called for a ban on short selling, saying that short selling was hurting society's most vulnerable. The Dutch government issued a partial ban on short selling, and Isaac Le Marie was barred from accessing any of his shares. He ended up losing what today would be 10 or 20 million dollars, basically his entire net worth. He left Amsterdam and went into exile. The writing on his tombstone states, Here lies Isaac Le Marie, a merchant for more than 30 years. Blessed by the Lord, he gained a lot of money, then lost all but his honor. Had he not been shaken out, his short bet would have eventually paid off. The Dutch East India Company did eventually collapse, but that happened 200 years later. Timing in markets is everything. Now, not all short selling works that way. There's a long history of short sellers uncovering fraud and improper accounting at firms. We've already discussed the Wirecard example, and another recent example is Trevor Milton, the CEO of the gravity-powered truck maker Nikola, who's awaiting trial on allegations first raised by short sellers. He's pled not guilty to making false claims about the company's vehicles. Enron is another example of what short seller Jim Chanos describes as legal fraud, where companies adhere to the accounting rules and regulations, but there's still an intent to deceive. Chanos identified that Enron was using aggressive accounting to front load profits and hide debt in its subsidiaries. According to Chainus, short sellers are the real-time financial detectives, whereas regulators are often financial archaeologists who turn up long after the fraud is done and work out what happened. 
The main reason that people are often uncomfortable with the idea of short selling is that it just seems wrong to be profiting from someone else's failures. But short selling provides several benefits both to the capital markets and to the real economy. Theoretical and empirical studies have shown over time that short selling improves overall market quality by contributing to price efficiency, liquidity and corporate governance. Short selling firstly contributes to the accuracy and efficiency of prices in securities markets by ensuring that both positive and negative public information about firms is quickly reflected in market prices. Without a facility for short selling, security prices would have an upward bias and not accurately reflect the security's underlying fundamentals. Short selling secondly has a positive impact on overall market quality, as it improves market liquidity. If you reduce the number of people trading a stock, liquidity is reduced. Additionally, if people are prevented from trading on negative fundamental data, stock prices become less efficient and liquidity providers like market makers need to take the higher pricing errors into account. They do this through charging a higher bid-ask spread. A paper by Bieber and Pajano in 2013 examined the liquidity impacts of short-selling bans across 30 countries and found a decline in liquidity when shorting constraints were more severe. The study found that a complete ban on all short sales led to an increase of almost 2% in the bid-ask spread. Another study by Masa Zhang and Zhang in 2015 showed that short selling contributes positively to good corporate governance by serving as an external disciplining mechanism on company management. In theory, since short sellers are motivated to uncover wrongdoing by management and then trade on that information through short sales, the probability and speed with which corporate misconduct is discovered increases. As a result, in a world with short selling, it's riskier for management to engage in misconduct, thus improving overall corporate governance. The study found that the mere possibility of short sale activity disciplines firm managers. The higher the short selling potential of a given stock, measured by the total supply of shares that are available to be lent for short sales, the less likely it was that firm management were manipulating corporate earnings. This clearly illustrates the disciplining effect of short sales on corporate executives. It'll be interesting to see how these investigations go and if any wrongdoing is found in the investigations by the Department of Justice and the SEC. Those who feel that the regulators have been asleep at the wheel will be happy to see an investigation and law-abiding short sellers will equally be happy to show that they've not been breaking any laws. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Daily Upside, by clicking on the link in the video description. It's a great newsletter that I can firmly recommend. If you like this video, you should watch the one on the top 10 short-selling disasters next. Have a great day and talk to you again soon. Bye.